happy. So I want to know when was the point? Obviously, you two. I don't think you guys ever had like a real hatred or dislike for each other. I think you had one of the gnarl, more gnarly competitive relationships yeah. of any sport that I've ever watched. Mm-hmm. I want to know then, though, like, what was the text message that got sent? What was the charity golf day? I don't think what there was, was a text but message. Had, but like, Texting what, wasn't that common back then. But no. when did you guys squash the beef? I don't know what, that do we ever remember? had. I know yeah. for me, I don't think we... I had... We, it wasn't beef, I don't think. It was just, it's it was dude, it's just though. he two, wanted to kick my ass and, and... And vice versa, you know? Like, just two dudes that wanted to win races and... Uh, but you wouldn't have gone and hung before. So yeah, it's I mean, like, a, what's the point? You know, we would like regular, obviously, you know, like we would connect through Atlanta and things like that, um, you know, prior to us going and spending way too much money on private planes. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's in, the, for sure. in the early days, um, you know, like, I mean, regularly I'd be on, we would be on the same flight. And, um, you know, I've kind of said this before, like Ricky and I always, there was always that huge amount of respect. Mutual you know? respect. Yeah. Um, you know, put a helmet on and some goggles and drop the gates and, and it was, you know, whoever could win could win and you did what you had to do to win. Um, I had this dude in my bedroom, you know, like yeah. I had a, the, the Oakley, you know, the famous yeah. or yeah. infamous. That whip, po- um, whip photo. Yeah, the number 70 with yeah. the Oakley podium. I literally had that above my bed. Um, so I, to me, it's just funny because like I... I actually was a fan, yeah. And, uh, but but just yeah, like admired everything about him, you know, like kind of what he did from his amateur stuff. Everything he did was cool. He was always a Fox guy, Oakley guy, um, you know. Obviously, winning races, and and then you know the troubles that he had when he first went to the big bike. Um, that really went like global in the fact that like I was what three years behind him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's kind of like oh, you know, like in the in the big scheme of things, like you know, you're going to struggle your first year and look what happened to Ricky Carmichael. Yeah, and so right. it's kind of like you're getting that three year heads up and I'm like, no, I don't want to do what Ricky did. And you know, I don't want to crash. I don't want to, you know, whatever. And, um, so in a lot of ways, though we didn't know each other where you lived on completely different sides of the world. Um, you know, I learned about, you know, that. And for me, one story that sticks in my mind and, um, I was an Oakley athlete as well. Um, And the one thing I always remember is just like everybody talked about how much gas he burned a day and how much he rode. And I remember as a kid, like that was it. I was like, dude, Ricky Carmichael rides a lot. Yeah. And I would just (laughs) ride for hours and hours, like literally take a, you know, five gallon, 20 liter gas can to the track and didn't leave until that thing was empty, you know? So, so um, so yeah, it's kind of funny like that. There's almost been a rivalry there without a rivalry even. See, and look at all that riding. And he's like multiple times Supercross champion, yeah. outdoor champion, kicked ass in the, in the lights class or, you know, regional Supercross uh, championship. Or the, that was 2002, East Coast, I believe, yeah? Yep, yep. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you just nothing replaces laps. But for me, I don't I, – I, I tell this to a lot of people. I feel like it wasn't us – who made the beef yeah. as much as it was the people the that entourage. were surrounding us. Yeah. yeah the yeah. entourage, you know, yeah, it's right. just, you know, so J H yeah. over there in the corner. Actually, I don't even, was it, it was, J H? It was, it was uh, it Scott one, Taylor. Yeah. Probably Scott yeah. Taylor. And then he had a uh, uh, Steve Astafin. Astafin what was, what's that? You used to have good people around I know. Well, you know, there's, <laughs> I got done racing and they're like, well, what are you going to do now? You just now? had to keep the cheapest dude. So huh? it, it was really, it was really, that that's what it really was. But like Chad said, there was a mutual respect there. And yeah. that's what, and there weren't a lot of cheap shots taken. Now we raced each other hard and I knew what he was going to do. And I'm sure he knew what I was going to do most of the time. So yeah, uh, be because we knew, we knew that we couldn't take the cheap shot because we knew that. Is this too much on the line at that point? Yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, you, well, and at that level, you don't want to get into the back and forth fourth each weekend and so you just let's just race it out for us like I don't remember a time that we never whatever happened on the race good or bad or ugly or it was a blowout whatever there was always a handshake in my opinion I I don't remember like where James and I like you think of James and I and it was like dude you would you wouldn't even look at him yeah and and but then (laughs) like but Ricky and I totally had a different 
Like it was a different rivalry, you know. Yeah. Like we, it was all left on the racetrack. Yeah. And so when did it? When did you guys first sort of come together oh, in th- the off track? Because you guys are like no, I, th- I, well, I, now, I, you know? I think like as soon as I stopped racing, I mean it got better like oh seven, but I wasn't racing for a championship, yeah. so it was like you know no harm no foul. But I mean obviously you, you you can let your guard down when I quit racing professionally. Yeah. You know, and then I became well, I'm one of his biggest fans. You know, I I want to see him do well. Uh, most important. I want to st- I, I want to see him sa- stay safe. I was just doing a little interview before we came up and talked with you, and I, I want I know he has fun racing and the position that he's in now, but I just want him to be safe. That's all. It's hard though because like dude, you were busting out the quad onto the tabletop. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. Well, it's not a quad. It's Remember, a, a tabletop is one it's a, so mounted it's still dirt. It's a triple. <laughs> yeah, you all tripled right. onto so the you tabletop. Tripled, you, so you tripling on, but like yeah. there you, you can see the like the way that your body English is on the bike, it's like, you're fucking having a go still. And it's like, you can sit here on yeah, the, side, on the side. You. That's what this, I mean. Like, this yeah. dude's still when you get it. on the no, bike, you, you just... You don't forget how to ride and... Uh, yeah, you, sometimes you do. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> I do. I least. would say, like, to go back a little bit on, like, when we started to become a little bit closer is, uh, I would say that when we went to, um, well, when I went to Suzuki, mm. yeah, um, okay. you know, Ricky came down to my, my house and my track and, you know, and, and that was what maybe was that, four oh, years yeah four years after retiring um you know and it was like that was kind of like that first moment where it's like wow ricky carmichael's at my house yeah. or my track um you know we did photo shoot today you know together we tested and um and it's funny like suspension wise we're completely in different planets but i think chassis wise we're actually really really close and and i worked with his longtime mechanic uh, mike gosler yeah yeah um and he would always make those comments you know like just my comments on what i want from an engine and a chassis are are for the most part what my, you know goose yeah. describes it as like dude you're just like ricky like you guys are so much alike in that level you know he has so much feel for the bike and it's kind of the same way I did. Yes, exactly. He's right. I, I know what I like, my sus- how my suspension to work. He knows how he wants his suspension to work. But the hard parts on the motorcycle, that's where we're very similar. We have really good feel, and we know what we need to perform at our highest level. And uh, if times have changed. It's not a lot like that anymore. With the generation coming up, they're just incredibly talented on whatever yeah. you, you give them. And when you give them a setup, they kind of ride around. They adjust and adapt to what they're given. Yeah. Where Chad and I, 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 I could probably speak for Chad on this, where we get something we can't do. We can adapt a little bit to what <laughs> they gave us, but we can't. I can't go out there and make it happen. Mm-hmm.